Today we're going to do a basic Brunt and Compass and uh, right hand rule video where we're going to talk just a little bit about strike and dip and we're going to take a strike and dip with a Brunton. So the purpose of a Brunton um, in terms of strike and dip, what we're trying to record. So let's say that we've got a surface that we care about. We want to take um, an orientation on the surface of its strike and dip. So what we're actually doing is imagining what the intersection of a horizontal plane and our surface would be. So I told my students yesterday, imagine I set my cup of tea on the surface and it is the water is perfectly level. This is my horizontal surface. And where that horizontal surface intersects the surface I care about, this one, the orientation of that line is my strike. Then I need to measure my dip. So my dip is the difference between that horizontal plane and the plane I care about. All right, so it's how far below the horizontal plane the plane I care about is oriented. Now, when we write strike and dip, we write strike as an orientation between 0 and 360 degrees, or you might write it in quadrant no notation. Um, that would work too. Um, and then we write dip as an amount between 0 and 90 degrees. Now, I am a real fan of including as much information as possible. So let's say that this line is trending, or the strike line is trending due north. And let's say that this is 35 degrees. If that's north, then this direction is to the east. You could write your strike and dip as 0, 0, 0, which is perfectly due north, comma, 35 degrees to the east. You could write north, 0, east, 35 degrees to the east. But you'll also see sometimes people just write 0, 0, 0, 35. Now the reason why they can do that is that they've used right hand rule. Um, and so what happens in right hand rule is we don't include the orientation here because we're assuming that when we collected the orientation data that the plane that we were interested in went down and to the right. So if I am a little person standing on my strike line and I am looking in the direction of strike that my feet are slipping down under me to the right. That's what it would mean to record the rock in the right hand rule. The problem is you can't just look at your Brunton and say, all right, this is the number I read for strike. My right hand is going down in this direction. So this is the number I'm going to record for dip. Um, and the reason you can't do that is you have two um, ends on your compass, right? That there's a little north arrow and a little south area arrow. So you can kind of take two approaches. You can either think it through at the beginning and go with right hand rule or for my students, uh, your professor might feel differently. I say just write down everything. Write down as much information as you can uh, because there's always also that chance that when you were in the field, you totally screwed up right hand rule and you're going to hate yourself when you get back home. So here's what I would do. I'm going to adjust this to look at, at my rock sample. I would identify the plane that I care about. And I would orient myself, if I can, so that that plane is going down and to the right. And then I would go ahead and write down the general orientation of down and to the right. So I'm going to have my Brunton. I make sure that it can free, my needle can freely rotate. And I'm looking at this, and my Brunton is saying that down and to the right, I'm going to read my north arrow, is 140. So 140 is in the southeast quadrant. All right, so if I think about having, go ahead and draw a little circle. 
southeast is down here. So I can go ahead and kind of draw in an estimation for strike. And I know if I want to go down and to the right, I need to be looking this way. I need to be looking to the northeast. So basically when I look at my compass, when I read my number, I'm going to go ahead and make sure ahead of time that I'm writing down the northeast version of strike, not the southwest version of strike. That's going to help me make sure that I'm following the right hand rule. Okay, so let's take a strike and dip of this rock sample. I'm going to take my compass. I'm going to hold my compass um, in front of me. I understand that east and west are flipped on my compass. I can also hold it like this. It's totally up to however uh, you feel comfortable doing it. You can fix your measurements either way. And if I'm holding my compass in my right hand, I'm going to find this edge, this um, kind of sharp lip underneath. And I'm going to imagine that I'm going to fit that sharp lip to the surface that I'm working on. Right? Now, when I bring that sharp lip to the surface, I am never taking it off. I'm going to act like it's stuck like it on glue. So let me show you with my field notebook what I mean. I've seen a lot of students when they take strike and dip, they'll lift up one end of their Brunton or the other. Okay, like a penguin waddling. Don't do that. Identify that corner and decide that no matter what, you are going to keep that corner glued to the plane that you care about. And you can, you should take your Brunton and kind of twist and turn on that plane and really know what it means to connect your Brunton on that edge to your plane. So I'm going to go to my plane. I'm going to keep my edge connected. And before I even try to get my bullseye bubble um, oriented, I'm just going to try and imagine where is this compass actually horizontal? So I just I eyeball it to begin with. That looks about horizontal to me. And then I go ahead and do my bubble because if you do this, nine times out of 10, you're going to get really close before you even get started with uh, your bullseye bubble. Once you've got it, you can click your little pin, uh, that white bubble thing on your compass, you can click it. And here I'm getting 46. I'm getting 46 on my compass. Now I know that I'm going to write it down as 46 because I made a plan in advance to write down the northeast version of strike so that I could follow my right hand rule. So again, I imagined making my compass horizontal. I got it set up with my bullseye level. And then I click my pin in place, and this time I got 46. Still super close. Now here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to lift your compass off and walk away and then come back to take dip. You want to tell a friend or sing a song in your head about the strike number you just got so that you don't forget it. And then you're going to take your finger and orient it in the direction of strike. That way, when you go to collect dip, you can orient your compass perpendicularly to your finger. Okay. So now as I go to take dip, I'm going to try and move my camera. All right. As I go to take dip, I am now going to rotate my finger in the back behind my compass, swinging my clinometer around until my clinometer is level and horizontal. I'll know when that happens because the bubble will be centered on my clinometer level. There we go. It's 
sometimes you might really mean well and you're just going to get it super close. So then I'm going to go ahead and read my dip. And here my dip is going to be 51. That's what it looks like. Um, I am reading, I've got my, my little leg right here, my foot that comes down and is attached to my clinometer. So that little foot, I look for the middle line and the middle line lines up with 50, you know, between 50 and 51. So that's my dip. So back on my paper, I'm going to write down my strike and dip. My strike was 0, 4, 6, comma, and my dip is going to be 51. Now that follows the right hand rule, but I could also write north 46, east 51 degrees to the southeast. And I, I know personally I'm going to feel a lot better about having more data. So that's how I take a strike and dip. Thanks.